This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin Core and mining pool centralization. We can see that most blocks these days are produced by a number of the largest pools, including all of the Chinese related pools, as well as Foundry in the US. So this is what mining pool centralization looks like. Why is this a problem? The problem is that the Bitcoin transactions that end up going into most Bitcoin blocks that are mined these days, these transactions are chosen by just a few people in the world. And that's because of the dominance of a few large Bitcoin mining pools that control most of the computational power and thus get to mine most of the blocks. In other words, they have the most hashers pointing toward their pool. Individual hashers, miners do the hashing, which is just the trial and error guessing to see if they get to win a block. But what these miners, what these individual hashers with their mining rigs are mining, this is almost always decided by whoever runs the Bitcoin mining pool that they're pointing their hash to. And it's this person or this committee or this group who gets to decide which transactions go into a block and thus get hashed by the individual miners or hashers. And if that person or committee or group is malicious, they could in the future comply with government censorship by excluding Bitcoin transactions that the government doesn't like. They could choose to mine empty blocks and do other bad things as we spoke about last week when we were talking about 51% attacks and Monero, where a lot of uh, group with a lot of the hash power in Monero was attacking the network. So what are some good ways to fix mining pool centralization in Bitcoin and ensure that more people are getting to decide which transactions get into a block while spreading out the hash power so that just a few large groups are no longer in charge? I can think of a few ways. One way to help fix mining centralization is to stop relying completely on Chinese manufacturers for your mining rigs, for your ASICs. It's really not a good thing that most miners are buying their mining rigs from the same company, namely Bitmain, that effectively controls all the Chinese mining pools. We really need to weaken Bitmain, not fund it with our purchases and make it stronger by funding it. Now, fortunately, as we discussed last week, there's a new American mining rig company that's going to help a lot. As we saw in Friday's video, this is Proto Rig, which which is a subsidiary of Block run by Jack Dorsey. I also put a link to this that talks about how Ant Pool and all the Chinese mining pools are essentially a pool of pools that is controlled by Bitmain. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just pause really briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button, that does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So that's one way to help fix Bitcoin mining pool centralization is to support these new companies, especially if it's made in the USA. How else can we help to fix Bitcoin mining pool centralization? Well, also we could try to find a way that allows individual miners to still mine together in a mining pool and thus share in the rewards while allowing those same individual miners to pick which transactions go into a block. In other words, to build their own block templates that get hashed. Now, fortunately, this has already been accomplished in the last couple of years. This really is the puzzle that Ocean Mining has solved with DATAM. And I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. DATAM stands for Decentralized Alternative Templates for Universal Mining. And this is not vaporware, but it's rather being used every day to mine new blocks using the Ocean Mining Pool, using DATAM with your own pool or your own hashers, or even solo mining. And we can see here all the blocks that uh, Ocean Mining has been producing. And there's a distinction here. Some of them are mined by Ocean. For example, this block 907287, we can see was mined by Ocean. And then this is another example where they're just using DATAM. This is Zeta Proof of Work, Zeta PAL mining a block. And I'll put a link to them in the description notes below. It looks like they're privately held. Uh, U.S. Institu institutional grade uh, mining company. But all of this is just to say that you don't need to actually mine with Ocean. You can just use Datum software and mine however you want. And I'll put a link if you want to learn how to mine Bitcoin at home using a small Bitax miner, a low power uh, sort of uh, hobby hobbyist uh, project. I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. And if you do this, this will also give you a chance to win the block subsidy. So if you set one of these up and you get really lucky and win the lottery, you'll make about $350,000 from the block subsidy. So in summary, buying proto rigs and using ocean mining and or datum are two great ways to help to decentralize Bitcoin mining pools. Now, what's probably one of the dumbest ways to try to mitigate Bitcoin mining pool centralization? I think it would have to be the suggestion from Bitcoin Core devs, namely force Bitcoin nodes to relay spam around the network, because if you don't do this, it increases the revenues of large Bitcoin mining pools that accept direct submission spam, 
when large Bitcoin mining pools make more money by accept, accepting spam transactions, these mining pools get even bigger, thus contributing to mining pool centralization. To prevent this, at least according to Bitcoin Core, we need to use our Bitcoin Core node software to force Bitcoin nodes to relay spam like inscriptions around the network. So let's look at a recent example of the spam that was mined by Mara, which remains one of the worst actors in the space. It was this inscription that took up almost an entire block at 3.952 megabytes. This is not the sort of thing that belongs on the Bitcoin blockchain. We can see here the actual block and we can see the transaction where they paid over $2,000 in fees to have Mara inscribe this. Now Mara made 22, as we said, $2,349 in transaction fees for including the spam transaction in their block. And again, it took up most of the block. There are just a few other transactions here at the bottom. But Mara also made $370,000 roughly, 3.125 Bitcoin from the block subsidy by mining the same block. So the question is, does that extra $2,349 really exacerbate Bitcoin mining pool centralization? Of course it doesn't. That's because 99.37% of the block reward came from the block subsidy. This transaction was almost certainly submitted directly to Mara via its Slipstream product, which currently charges about two times the normal Bitcoin transaction fees that you'd see in a normal mempool. And that means that the sender quote unquote overpaid by about about $1,000, I'd say $1,175. I'm just taking half, half of this amount since the fees would have been double. That's roughly what Slipstream charges. So this is the amount, about $1,000. That's the real amount that we should conclude is contributing on the margins here to increasing Bitcoin mining pool centralization. Again, this $1,000 is just rounding error compared to the $370,000 block, block subsidy that Mara earned from this. So there's something really strange going on here with Bitcoin Core's uh, recommendation here. If Bitcoin Core devs actually cared about mining pool centralization, wouldn't you expect them to be recommending things like ocean mining and Datamist solutions? rather than putting forth this bizarre justification, blowing open the spam filters instead. And here's the thing, over the past two years, Bitcoin Core Dev's changes to the software have all been in the direction of enabling more spam like this. Bitcoin Core Dev's actions are ensuring that everyone who uses Bitcoin Core software out of the box with its default settings, which is still more than 80% of node runners, all these people will continue to be forced to relay spam like inscriptions and soon even much larger op returns in the next version of the software. Now, perhaps it's understandable that they don't want to recommend that Bitcoin Core devs or Bitcoin Core as an organization don't want to recommend individual companies like Ocean Mining. But here's the thing, Datum is free and open source software. Anyone can use it and not have to pay Ocean Mining a dime. So something smells a bit off here. The question is, why is Bitcoin Core taking the route that it is, alienating so many Bitcoiners in the process, coming up with these bizarre justifications that technically are correct, but they're always in the direction of spam and they don't really get to the heart of the issue. Bitcoin Core's bizarre behavior is driving more and more Bitcoiners to run Bitcoin knots. Instead, we currently have over 17% of the network now running Bitcoin knots, up from just one or 2% earlier this year. Year. If you want to learn how you can run Bitcoin Knots as well and help to defend the network from spam and from very bad updates from Bitcoin Core, I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. You can watch it and also be sure to check out the description notes down here where I'll show you many different ways that you can run Bitcoin Knots for free on your laptop or you can run it on a mini PC. There are various solutions here that are quite interesting. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.